Hi everyone, I'm Craig Collins from the What the Warehouse Show. With me today, I have Greg Vittori. I'm going to get that name wrong. Greg Vittori. Vittori. Um, Greg is with a company called Rooms, and Greg has a huge amount of experience in logistics, supply chain, and warehouse management. So, Greg, welcome to the show. Yeah, and uh, actually, it's it's uh, pronounced Vettorino. Um, so it's uh, a lot of people kind of kind of mess that one up, but yeah. <laughs> well, I certainly did. Probably it's okay. It so, it's Great. one of those unique last names that uh, only uh, only my family seems to have. So, Greg, tell me about your background. Sure. Uh, well, I uh, graduated college in two thousand um, with a degree in sociology. So, uh, never worked a day in it in my life. Um, and I started uh, in back office finance. Um, while I was doing that, I was still chasing a dream to play pro football. That unfortunately didn't work out. Um, I ended up leaving uh, an insurance company I was working at, uh, AIG at the time, um, in August of 2005 to go work for World Wrestling Entertainment. Uh, at World Wrestling Entertainment, the uh, yes, the professional wrestling company, um, I started in back office finance and royalties, uh, and I encountered a team uh, at the time was Consumer Products Group, uh, led by two gentlemen named Mike DiDomizio and Jeff Scro. Uh, Jeff had both played an integral part of my life, Jeff being not only a, uh, a friend, a colleague, um, an eventual uh, boss, mentor, uh, second father, all of the above. So he uh, brought me into the wonderful world and crazy world of operations, and I've never looked back since. Um, <laughs> so Jeff and I uh, worked together on several companies after WWE um, in a lot of a lot of small business e-commerce uh, startup companies. Um, one of them was a flash sale company called Ideally. Um, wow. We then moved into uh, a small uh, a women's fashion line uh, called Nasty Gal that was based out of Shepherdsville, Kentucky. Um, I left the fold for a little bit to go back to New York and uh, relocate, but then wound up coming back to Jeff. And uh, while he was actually opening up his own 3PL facility in Louisville, Kentucky called Boss Logistics, um, it's an acronym, Better Omni Supply Chain Solutions. And uh, then I was recruited to Shopify and the, the at the time Shopify uh, was launching the Fulfillment Network, um, which was their answer to Amazon and Amazon fulfill, Fulfillment by Amazon. And uh, then um, I've transferred over to Room. Uh, Room is a different little, a little bit of a different uh, company from what I've been doing. Um, it's more on the furniture side. We make... Uh, We've got some really cool products. Our flagship product is the foam booth, which is a, a soundproof foam booth. It's a single person foam booth. Kind of looks like one of the old, uh, uh, growing up in New York, the Bell Atlantic foam boots that you see on the corner right. and, and that type of thing. But it's a little bit more updated and slicker looking. Um, it's soundproof, I believe, up to about 90 to 95%. Um, and, you know, you can have calls like we're doing right now and, in a enclosed area and it's perfect for the new hybrid model workspace that's been coming out of covid um we yeah. also have a couple of other products uh we have the room s the meeting which is a meeting room um it's got two couches it's got a uh it's got the uh, so you could do a zoom call monitor whiteboard everything we've also got the open room and focus room which are more like open style offices so seating up to one to two people the uh, meeting room and the the meeting room, the focus room, and the room S <clears throat> product are sound dampening up to 70% um, due to some acoustics. We have to have some sort of ventilation for, you know, for oxygen to pass yeah. in and out of. Um, and another beauty part about our uh, our open room and focus room, it's completely ADA compatible. So if uh, one of your employees happens to be within a wheelchair, uh, it does have the uh, the appropriate turn radius to get that for that to allow that person. Um, ease of movement as well as uh, entry and exit points okay so so the principle is you go put these down whether it's a booth in an office an open office area or at a mm -hmm. conference center you've got a a, a a small meeting room or or online meeting room and uh, and you guys deliver this as a product so um, tell me a bit about the operations of it how do you sort of pick that product how, how do you pick a room in a warehouse um well <laughs> <laughs> it uh, it's uh, it, it assembles a little bit like um, it almost assembles a little bit like IKEA furniture. Uh, our right. phone booth is actually the simplest product to install. Anybody can do it. 
Um, it uh, comes on a pallet. A pallet is about 90 feet long by 40 feet wide. Um, and it comes in, uh, it has a five box. So we have our overpack, which has most of your four walls. It has your four walls, your doors, um, and your roof and floor. Uh, but then we decide, it, we have one of the options that we have is we have an Ethernet connected one and we have our standard model. So your Ethernet connected one can actually power to be uh, to have a, to have a Wi-Fi in it. Um, okay. And uh, the, that's, that is the fourth and the back panel. Uh, and that's a separate one. So depending on which model you buy, uh, whether you buy a standard or whether you buy a connected, will determine which fourth box would essentially go. Um, right. That one just lays right on top, palletized, bundled together, right in the okay. truck. And and do you stock these, um, uh, or, or are they typically made to order? Um, our phone booth products are stock product. Uh, we mm -hmm. buy them from our producer, which is located in Orleans, Indiana. And uh, we do we do buy them at purchase orders, and we bring them in in stock. And we actually have those from a pick pack, a pick pack and ship uh, style. Um, okay, it's <laughs> it's a little bit of a different pick pack process, uh, mainly because yeah. you it's a it's a massive pallet that weighs about 500 pounds. So it's not like you have an order yeah. pick or an order cart. Uh, it's basically, you know, it's done off of forklift. Um, but yeah. the uh, box four is something that a two person of, depending on how strong you are, the individual boxes are not that heavy, um, but the entire encompass weighs about 500 pounds. Um, yeah. Our room S is a little bit more on the made to order style style because um, it's a, it's a little bit of a more cumbersome pack out uh, right. and it requires three pallets as opposed to one pallet. So we yeah. have to change that out on how we deliver those and how we actually put those together. It's a little bit harder of a, uh, of a build. We have a right. really, really, really great assembly team. Um, we have a combination of local vendors who do the final mile installation, a bunch of really great teams that go on site and actually build the product. And it's really cool to watch them. We also have a professional services team that also does all the training uh, and also supervises some of the builds. So some of our bigger builds we've done, uh, we've done builds for Amazon. We've done builds for Tesla, various professional sports teams, Google, um, you know, those we actually have, uh, we have a team that's led by uh, Jeff Icarudian and Jeff is, he's one of the best to work with. Right. So, uh, and and where is your warehouse based? Uh, we're our warehouse, both of our, so we're based in the Midwest, um, although yeah. our corporate office and design lab is in New York City. Uh, our design right. lab is in Brooklyn and our corporate office is located uh, in Broadway off, off around the Soho area. Uh, yeah. But our 3PL is in Indianapolis, Indiana. We right. have a production facility that makes the Room S product in Charlevoix, Michigan. And then we have our phone booth uh, flagship product that's made in Orleans, Indiana. Okay. Now, Greg, your previous life was with Shopify and you specialized in e-commerce type products. It's it's small orders. It's packaging packaging them up and shipping them rapidly. You, you now transition mm -hmm. to this incredible environment where you've got these huge, huge products to ship out. Obviously not the same volumes. Um, what technology do you use at the moment at room and i know that you have a background in um at shopify and in a number of other uh, instances of using wms products so let's take the as this is a wms show um a wowing show let's talk about some of those technologies um so well, you we're, we're a little bit on the simpler side of technology uh so we are using our erp system we're using salesforce um to to maintain the orders and bring the orders in um, our ERP system is NetSuite, so that's where we're doing our transfer orders, our purchase orders, uh, creating inbound purchase orders and transfer orders out to our 3PLs, um, and uh, also the financial, uh, most of our financial uh, information is, excuse me, categorized, ca kept in NetSuite. Okay. Our 3PL is using uh, CargoWise, that's where they actually maintain the inventory and stock levels in the building. Um, yes. Our producers are not really uh not really sure what they're using you know they're they're using a little bit of a they do rf scan out but really just to maintain the serial number accuracy that's of the products that's being produced because this way um should we find any defect during the install or the customer reports some type of defect um in the electrical equipment we can actually match that up to a serial number that's at the scan yeah. so we would know whether or not it's a uh, it's a Harbor produced unit or a Jasper produced unit. Uh, those are our two CMs. Yeah. Um, and we're really doing 
our pick pack uh, with basic RF. So okay. they drop the orders into the WMS. They have to pick X amount of parts. So it's scanned. The RF pick is really more to capture the outgoing serial number. Um, yeah. Since most of our product is actually packed into the overpack and then the serial number on the, so we would scan the outbound overpack, which has the main boxes. And then we would scan the serialized box four, which would be whether or not it's a yeah. uh, standard or connected. And if we're doing anything overseas, um, so those overseas containers we're actually scanning out where we have boxes that go for, that have the various connections, um, European connection, Swiss connection, uh, UK connection, that all gets scanned out in an RF. Okay. Let's talk generically. Uh, we had a discussion previously to this, and um, you had some sort of choice things about uh, to say about WMS. Um, what, do you, what do you find in your experience? What makes a good WMS system? Um, I think from a standpoint is the ability to, the ease of use, so this way you can train people and get them up and running right away. Um, I've had, I've, I've got a little bit of gray in my beard, if you can't tell. So I've been around for a little bit, but we've been on everything from, you know, carbon paper pick to, uh, to, to basic AS 400 uh, WMSs all the way in through Manhattan, Red Prairie, high jump. Um, now we're using cargo wise, having yeah. the ability to actually onboard an, a floor associate to get them into the process right away. I would have to say having some sort of ease of use. Um, when we, when going back to one of the big implementations we did uh, when I was with Nasty Gal, we went from quiet logistics to high jump and we wound up having to, we were able to take high jump and customize high jump to where everything was scanned. So associates right. didn't have to, didn't have to keystroke in anything. It was just scan, quantity, scan, quantity, everything had, everything was basically barcode based to where yeah. it was able to move through an order faster. So we had this linear system where everything was coming in from the right and moving out to the left into conveyors. And all they really had to do was scan, 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 package, label, printed on the box, on the conveyor, yeah. out the door. Yeah. So keeping it simple, um, both at the user interface level and even at the process level is, in your in your opinion, the, the priority number one for implementations. Right. It's the... The simpler you can make it to train the people on the floor, the simpler you can make it for managers to solve problems. Because what would happen uh, if you if you get into an into an error where a packer can't move forward, or because a because a stock is missing, an item is damaged, having that ability to basically remove that simply that piece simply, so the packer can the packer can keep moving um, yeah. and keeping the you, essentially every bit of downtime you have is loss of time and loss of revenue and loss of yep. productivity. So keeping everybody moving also keeps the tempo of the day better. And it also keeps the people more engaged. Yeah. You know, I, I think this is something that we underestimate is how important it is to have flow, have processes that are simple and keeping this stuff really simple. Often people go overboard and then they've got to a complex form on the scanner that you've got to fill in and uh, the guys just start getting it wrong you want to keep it as simple as possible irrespective of how complex your back end is the reality is that that simplicity makes for flow it makes for easy understanding and makes for easy training right and if you look at it from the standpoint of uh um the japanese 5s sort systemize sustain shine that if you keep it into that model Everything yeah. kind of moves. It, it It's designed to move linear. It's designed to move front, back, side to side. And from that type of standpoint, especially when you're, you know, when you get into, when you get into your small pack e-com and you get into your holiday season, because we're right, we're staring down the barrel at peak season. Now, fortunately, room doesn't have a peak season. So loving that. Yeah. Um, but, you yeah. know, when we used to get into the peak seasons of, of, Nasty gal, the peak seasons at Boss Logistics when we were doing uh, doing product with Diff Iwer and getting to stuff into wholesale, into our wholesale business, um, everything we were doing at Shopify, you go from doing maybe two to 3,000 orders a day to 15 to 20,000 orders a day. So in yeah. order for you to hit that capacity, you're bringing on more people. So you've got your, you know, you got your top guns, you got your top performers that you're having yeah. every day. But on any given day during peak season, you might have 10, 15, 20, 30 new faces. 
goal is to get them up and running, not take two to three days to get them up and running because in two to three days, peak could be over. You got to get them in, get them moving, get them going fast. And that's also, you really see who, as you come out of these peak seasons, when you go into hiring, those are the people that you want to convert. You can see who you want to convert from, from temp employees to your potential full-time employees down the line. So when they see that ease of use, it, it, it allows you to build that bridge with them a little bit faster as a floor manager and keep yeah. that production moving. Yeah. And then the last point on, on that is we, you know, we, we spoke about customization and in order to get that ease of use, often the requirement is actually customization because, yes. yeah, you know, it's all very well saying, well, our receiving process is like this. You've got to fill in 10 different steps and then you've got to click this. And then that, if you can't customize that process, you can't simplify it. Yeah. Sometimes very simple takes a lot of complicated stuff on the back end. Um, yeah. I've been fortunate to work with a lot of people smarter than me that know how to build that <laughs> stuff. Um, so I would basically sit there on the floor and say, well, I don't care. I want it to do this smart That's guy. It. Make it do this way. Um, I had a gentleman uh, whose name was Boris Fuentes. Boris, uh, you know, Boris and I worked together at several different companies and he's one of the smartest guys when it comes to uh, Boris and also John Melton. Um, I got to give some credit to those guys. They they knew how to take what was take what was in here and actually yeah. make it to where it would work, you know. You know <laughs> yeah, and, and I, I always tell my implementation consultants that as well is that it doesn't matter how clever you are, you need to make the system work so that the forklift operator can drive it, and that exactly. means you've got to be really clever to keep it simple, simple, simple. Yeah, it takes a lot of really, really smart people to do a lot of really complicated things to make it really <laughs> simple in the front side. So, yeah, absolutely, so, absolutely. But that's, you know, that's the fun part of our business. The fun part of our business is how, you know, seeing, that's one of the things that really I was able to really like about this because, you know, when you're working in back office finance and you're working in insurance companies, it basically you're working on spreadsheets all day, you know, yeah. to, to transfer that and actually be like, well, I think I want the process to look like this. If you could figure out a way to whiteboard it and draw it up and then actually map it out on the floor, um, you know, <laughs> fortunately working for a lot of startup companies, you usually have to find ways to do that for cheap or free um, yeah. using some of the material you have in the building with you. Uh, so a lot of duct tape and bubble gum, but, you know, we were able <laughs> to get it done, um, you know, building, building, a building a sort system out of static roll conveyors, just some of the things that we were able uh, to do and really, really just, you know, no day is ever the same and you really just get to have some fun at work and, you know, you get to play with cool yeah. toys like forklifts and pallet jacks and walkie riders. So. Absolutely. And, and, and advert for, for our industry, you know, get in, get into this and, and you're not sitting behind a desk all day. You're actually right. out there doing some interesting stuff. Right. Yeah. And especially, you know, when I got, when I, you know, when I got to Shopify from, from all of that, getting to work with robots, Oh yeah. <laughs> you, know, yeah. you know, we had the, uh, we had the Chuck robots with six rivers, just really, really cool, um, you know, but you know, it's, it was, you know, when you were trying to do, when you're trying to do 10 X during holidays, having an order, a static order pick cart that only could pick eight orders at a time when we yeah. need somebody running around with carts of stuff, it was, you know, you, yeah. you get, you get to, you know, you really, you know, it's three o'clock in the morning and you still got a thousand orders that got to ship that day. Cause you got a truck coming at six in the morning. You really get to see what you can do on lack of yeah. sleep and a lot of coffee. <laughs> yeah being there myself I, I actually looking forward to a chat uh in the next couple of weeks with a um a, a guy who specializes in robotics for the mid-market warehouse and um that, so that chat's going to be coming up soon greg it's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you and um i i think you know for our, our audience, if they want to get hold of you guys and check out Room, uh, um, where should they head? Uh, what is the website? Um, we do have our website. It is room.com. Let me just make sure that is the okay. right website. Um, hang in there. I'm a good thing I'm sitting on a computer today. <laughs> okay, room.com. Yep, and room you can room.com. Find- and yep. that actually has our full product line. Uh, if It also gives you a couple of things that you can do as well. Um, if you are looking, if you're an e-com buyer, we do have an e-com platform on our website. It lists all of our local showrooms in New York, San Francisco, uh, Chicago, Los Angeles. Uh, we do have some showrooms overseas in London, in Copenhagen, Denmark, uh, Melbourne, Australia, and Zurich. Um, it has our number if you want to call in and actually speak to a salesperson. Um, that number is 646-791-3726. 
They'll do any custom pro, um, custom quotes. Uh, we've got some really, really great salespeople led by Karen Straubel. She's one of the amazing and great to work with. Also, Brandon Sosa. Uh, we've got some, we've got a really, really great team here. Um, if you want to get hold of me, I am on LinkedIn. Uh, my profile is Greg Vetterino. That's V is in Victor, E T T O R I N O, 6 6. Excellent. Excellent. Greg, as I said, thank you very much. And um, I'm Been sure great. that our audience is going to thoroughly enjoy this episode. Thank you. Hope so. And I hope we can chat again and uh, see how some future things are going. Definitely. Absolutely. Great. Thanks for that chat. Thank you, Craig.